Preparing for a Big Change, the new program coming to Fort Vancouver High School and how it will prepare kids for college and careers. Plus, Election Day comes to Vancouver classrooms. It was a pretty fun process. I don't know if it'll be fun when I grow up. Hear what students have to say about voting for the first time and... They're kind of formulating their own ideas. Students get their hands on a digital textbook. See how this iBook, designed by Vancouver teachers, is expanding the way students learn. Hello and welcome to Inside Vancouver Public Schools. I'm Nick Vole. Fort Vancouver High School is remarkably diverse and starting next year, the school's approach will reflect that diversity. As Amanda Richter reports, every student in the school will be part of a new program with an international flair. On a Wednesday morning, a group of Fort Vancouver High School students meet to talk about their role as ambassadors. Basically, the representatives who will, among other things, show visitors the school's many programs and features. It's important to make people feel comfortable and welcome and let them know that uh, Fort's a good place to be, a good place to learn. Fort's newest program starts next year, and it's a big one. Fort will become a Center for International Studies, part of the Asia Society's International Studies Schools Network. It's a way for Fort to take advantage of one of its biggest strengths. Our school is already incredibly diverse. Um, you know, all of us, are, a lot of us are from different countries, speak different languages. I think simply in this school itself, there has been a lot of global competency preparation. And so I think taking the next step of being an international school, it's definitely going to increase that. You heard Austin mention global competency, which is a big part of the program. So what is that? To me, global competency is just simply being prepared for whatever the world has in store, whether it's, you know, whatever job you go to or whatever college you go to, the idea of interacting with other cultures in an appropriate and respectful way and just, you know, being able to learn from different cultures and build from different cultures as well. The spirit of cooperation blends well with Ford's Trapper 10, a set of behavior expectations posted in the cafeteria. We're about respect. Um, we follow the Trapper 10 every day. It's just different things like holding the door open and like, being kind to others and um, being a good role model for other people. Another major component of being an international school is a shift in academics. Students will be pushed to not only learn, but to better demonstrate what they've learned. They are doing more projects, more interdisciplinary lessons between their teachers, so in, whether it's in math or in science or in arts. Um, how are you having those opportunities to investigate the world? How are you learning how to recognize perspectives? How are you communicating our ideas and how are you taking action? As part of the international focus, students will be encouraged to travel. Staff is ready to counsel them on how to find scholarships or other funding sources. The goal is for each student to leave Fort with a broader perspective on the world than your average graduate. Well, the international studies is to help um, create uh, not only students, but create citizens that are going to be ready for not only college, but and life and their future careers they might have in the future. It's not just your transcript, but how can they speak to when they're writing those college entrance essays or if they're applying for a job where they can talk about experiences that they might not have other places. For Inside Vancouver Public Schools, I'm Amanda Richter. Thanks, Amanda. The Asia Society is a nonprofit organization and was started in 1956 by John D. Rockefeller to increase education and cooperation between the U.S. and Asia. It has since spread across the world. To learn more, go to asiasociety.org. Midterm elections don't typically get large voter turnouts, but hopefully that will change. As Tara Cox reports, students at Discovery Middle School get their first taste of democracy and a lesson in civic duty. Every vote counts. That's the lesson in this Discovery Middle School classroom as students debate the issues on the November ballot. These are big topics, from school class sizes to gun control, and the debate has been an eye-opener. I haven't really thought about like people trying to buy guns on the internet, like how that could be like a, like a danger maybe. I haven't really thought about that, so it got me kind of thinking about it. Students researched the measures and candidates, and then discussed the issues in a Socratic forum. They kept notes on each topic on their iPads and referred to them as they talked. I would try to like figure out what their opinion was and like try to make mine better than theirs, like try to persuade them to like change theirs. Beyond the issues, the students also got a lesson in what it means to be an active part of a democracy. 
Uh, I think it's important for me to vote just because I can feel like I've made an impact on the community and that I've done, I've done stuff for the community to help out. If people didn't vote, then it would only be a certain amount, like a little group voting for like the whole um, world or like country or whatever. After the debate, students go to the Washington Secretary of State's website to cast their vote. So make sure you know what yes means and what no means for that law. And no matter who wins, there's one certain outcome. Washington has a bunch of future voters. Right now we're the kids, but soon we'll be, we'll grow and then we'll be like, maybe someone in my class will be the president one day. It was different, but it was cool, it was fun. Cause I gotta place my opinion. Felt, felt like I had power and it was fun. Inside Vancouver Public Schools, I'm Tara Cox. Thanks Tara. Here are the results from students in the city of Vancouver from all of its schools. On measure 1351, which would limit class sizes, students voted no. Students also rejected measure 591, which would eliminate state gun laws that go beyond federal measures. On another gun law, initiative 594, students said yes. It would require stricter background checks for online and gun show sales. In the local race for Congress, students voted for the incumbent, Republican Jamie Herrera Butler. You can get the full results from around the state on the Washington Secretary of State website. That's www.sos.wa.gov. And that brings us to our We Learn story of technology in the classroom. Students at the middle school level used iPads to vote, but they also used them to prepare for the election. Vancouver Public Schools saves money and improves the student learning experience by writing its own electronic book. It passed with the day after the election, students in Cheryl Miller's social studies class at Jason Lee Middle School get the results. They researched candidates and issues on their iPads, and that's just the start. These students are now using an iBook, developed by Vancouver teachers. It was an amazing process. Ms. Miller and others, including administrator Kathy Wolfley, met this summer to compile the book, bringing together text, maps, and historical documents. So how's an iBook different? It has so many elements that a traditional textbook just doesn't have. Start with organization. Basically you have tons of navigation tools you can use. You can swipe them down, you can switch chapters super easily, and instead of flipping through pages or a table of contents, you can just type in a page number and go straight to it. Next, personalization. And the kids say, well you can't write in your textbook, but you can write in your iBook. That means students can highlight words and sentences without ruining an expensive paper textbook for the next student. And then after that, if you want to make a note, you can do a long press and actually do a sticky note where you can take notes in the book as well. And you can also make study cards out of them so that you can um, do like flash cards where you can have information on each card and, and quiz yourself. Since it's on their iPads, their iBook goes with them everywhere. It's easy to bring around a lot of different books because they can all be in one place. So it's much easier to carry around one iPad than a big stack of books if you want to read a lot. Most importantly, it shifts history and social studies away from traditional rote memorization into what's called the inquiry model, which encourages critical thinking. Uh, the kids are empowered by being able to do the inquiry, and I think they're motivated by the iBook format. Students not only learn facts, they analyze primary and secondary historical documents, ask questions, and form conclusions. Kids, there's a lot more rich information that kids can really dive into as far as their analysis. Basically they're deciding what's important and making conclusions based on those decisions um, rather than just being told. Patrick Mongrain's class at Jefferson Middle School is among other middle schools using the iBook. He's excited about what it does for his kids but also for teachers. It kind of empowers teachers, right? The fact that we can choose what we're teaching. Um, we developed all of the questions, you know, we gathered all of the documents. Um, so I think that's really cool where it's kind of that balance where we do have the, you know, the common core standards we have to follow, but we're choosing how we're doing it. I like the fact that our teachers actually care about what material we're reading and not just picking it off an approved list. We have a huge library of We Learn stories on our YouTube page. See how kids are using technology to learn. Just go to www.youtube.com slash vansdtv and look up the We Learn playlist. Students across Vancouver participate in another American tradition, honoring our nation's veterans. We stopped by Thomas Jefferson Middle School for their annual Veterans Day Assembly. Student speakers talked about the sacrifices our military members make to serve our country. 
the school's music department performed patriotic songs, culminating with a group sing-along. Several veterans were in attendance as well and got a well-earned round of applause from students and staff. Over at Fort Vancouver High School, the metal shop built a touching tribute to fallen soldiers. Each metal cross in the school's courtyard represents a Fort graduate who was killed in service to our country. Of course, this was not the only tribute at Fort to veterans. Like other schools in the district, it offered students an assembly and a chance to reflect on military service. Vancouver Public Schools is held up as an example of innovation in a nationally published case study. The Digital Promise League of Innovative Schools just released its report on Vancouver Public Schools teacher librarians. The multimedia case study spotlights how VPS is transitioning the position of librarian to something bigger and better. The modern teacher librarian not only manages the school's books, but also teaches classes, assists teachers with technology, and guides students as they develop research skills. As students begin to use iPads and laptops as part of the district's one-to-one -one technology initiative, teacher librarians also show students how to be safe online. That's really port important when you're talking about um, ethical use of technology and really just making sure students feel safe with this new equipment that they're getting and that their parents feel safe too um, with different resources that their students can access. If you want to read the case study for yourself, head to the Digital Promise website. That's www.digitalpromise.org. One of the nonprofit's goals with its case studies is to provide districts across the country with a blueprint on how to modernize and improve. Students at Minnehaha Elementary combined reading, art, and pumpkins in a fun school-wide contest. The task was to decorate a pumpkin to represent a character from a book. First, students chose a pumpkin from the school pumpkin patch, which was donated by a local farmer. Then, each class worked together to choose which character and book would be represented and how to decorate their pumpkin. The finished products were displayed in the common area for parents and a winner was chosen on Halloween. Thanks to teacher Kelsey Andrzejewski for sending us these photos. Finally, a new feature on Inside Vancouver Public Schools, it's called Hashtag VPS Success. We scoured Twitter to find the best examples of teaching and learning happening in the district. Our first selection comes from Principal April Whipple at Ogden Elementary, who posted pictures from her school's Donuts with Dads event. The school's Family Community Resource Center put together the event, which brings in fathers for breakfast and reading with their kids before school. It's an easy way to get dads involved with their child's school, which is a great way to boost student learning. Want to get involved? Log into your Twitter account and use the hashtag VPS Success. You can post comments or photos, anything that shows how kids are learning in class. And that's it for us. Thank you for watching Inside Vancouver Public Schools. Until next time, I'm Nick Bowles.